Um, like I said, my name is Meredith Drazy, and I'm here to talk about something that I'm very passionate about. I love my job, I'm passionate about it. I've learned a lot about talking to people, helping ease some anxieties and um, fear of the unknown and managing pain and managing expectations. Uh, so, gained a little bit of a different perspective, I think. I'm very brutally honest with my patients, uh, sometimes so much so that it puts them off initially until they kind of get the program, get what I'm saying, and wrap their head around it. Um, so just want to share a little bit about what I've learned with you. So I want to start off by saying that pain does not have to control you. There are millions of people every single day dealing with pain in some aspect, in some form, in some regard. Physical pain, mental pain, emotional pain. In my area, in my world, in the hospital, we see surgical pain. It's primarily what we're talking about. Um, people come in for surgery, they have an operation, it hurts, we fix them, we send them home, right? That's the plan anyhow. Um, but it's not just the pain itself that we struggle with. It's the fear of the unknown, the anxiety that's surrounding this pain. That's the real struggle. That's what we have to overcome and contend with. Uh, especially people, they've never had surgery before. Maybe they've never encountered something that's so traumatic or so problematic. They don't know how to process this amount of pain. They don't know what to expect. Part of the key, or the whole key, with this solution is removing the barriers because pain is unavoidable, but it does not have to control you. So, like Nick said, every week I stand up and I talk to 18 patients and their family members and their caregivers and I try as hard as I can. Sometimes it's harder than others. There you go. Sometimes it's a little bit harder than others. Uh, to try and convince them that what they're going through is okay and it's not gonna kill them. <laughs> We're all gonna get through it. Um, but we take this time and talk about the whole surgical process. So we talk about pre-op, post-op, what to pack in their overnight bag, what tests they have to do beforehand to get ready for surgery, what the members are on the team that are gonna be taking care of them, what the physical therapy part of surgery is like, um, both after and when patients get home. So I've done about 70 of these talks in my current role. So I'd say I have it down to a pretty good science as far as the amount of time we spend on each topic. Because I only have about 65 minutes to get my point across to make sure we're all on the same page and everyone's feeling really good when they walk out of those doors. So of all the topics that we talk about, the number one singular topic that devotes the most time and attention is pain management. That's when you see this little graph up here, a little question mark up there, that little sliver that's unidentified. It's pain management. That's the most amount of questions that I get. People don't ask things like, what exactly happens in my surgery? My doctor didn't explain it well. Or, I really wanna have my wife or husband spend the night with me because I'm anxious, is that allowed? Or, hey, what's the password in the free Wi-Fi? Because that'd be my question if I was having surgery. Uh, and I get those questions sometimes. But usually, the questions are about pain. People ask me, is it going to hurt after surgery? Yeah. Uh, I've had, I told my doctor that I don't want to feel any pain after surgery. I don't want it to hurt. I told him, I'm telling you, who else do I need to tell to make sure that happens? <laughs> People say that to me in class. How bad does joint replacement hurt? <laughs> I get all of these questions all the time. And sometimes I laugh, and the whole class laughs together, and I answer the same way. Yes, this is going to hurt. It is going to be uncomfortable. You are going to get through it. Will you be in agony? No. Are you going to suffer? Absolutely not. Is your entire medical team going to do everything they can 
to take care of you and manage your pain in a responsible, conservative way? Yeah, definitely. And are you gonna get through it? Absolutely. And here's how. We are going to set realistic expectations. That's step one. Anytime you're talking about pain, again, no matter what kind of pain you are experiencing, if you're having surgery, if you're going through a divorce, if you just got fired from your job, it is going to hurt, it is going to be painful. It's not pretty, and not, it's, I mean, when is it ever? But if you can accept that and wrap your head around it, I promise you, you are going to be so much better off. And it's when I say that, that I see people's faces start to soften, and it's kind of this aha moment where they go, okay, well, yeah, at least she was honest. It's gonna hurt a little bit, but it's gonna be okay. Two days later, I'll be home, and then I'll get beyond it. So setting realistic expectations is the number one key in overcoming this hurdle in complicated pain management, okay? When you think about realistic expectations, whenever you set them too high or they're not based in reality, they're often unmet. Did you know that uh, people say, anyhow, it's pretty common, that unmet expectations are the number one reason for divorce? Yeah, I believe it, makes sense. Unmet expectations lead to dissolution of businesses. Uh, they lead to people stiffing their tab uh, for a nice expensive dinner because it didn't meet their expectations of the quality. Uh, I met expectations um, can kill your sex life. Mm, mm, it's true. It happens. Yeah. But in my world, unmet expectations lead to poor patient outcomes. Patients are dissatisfied. They're discouraged in their providers, in themselves, in their recovery. So if we set those realistic expectations from the beginning, outline what's gonna happen and how real it's gonna be, it's a night and day difference. So once we've set those expectations, the next step in the process is trying our best to reconcile perception with reality. So we have this little scale here. We use this in any hospital. If you've ever been in the hospital or in the doctor's office in the last, I don't know, 10 years, you've probably seen it. So this is a scale we use to let patients measure the amount of pain they're having. Now the scale is pretty basic when you look at it. Okay, it's simple. Zero is no pain, all right? 10 is the worst pain possible. It says it right up there by the little frowny face with the tears coming down. Worst pain possible. So this does not mean the worst pain compared to last like an hour ago when we asked you, or the pain compared to yesterday when you first hurt yourself or first sustained an injury. This is the worst pain possible that you could ever experience or endure in your entire lifetime. So when we put it in that perspective and explain it to patients in a way they can understand, it's another aha moment. Suddenly, 10 out of 10 seems a little silly right, because it's a hangnail. So it's probably not the worst pain that you're ever gonna experience in your lifetime. If it is, good for you, because you live a really nice life. So when we marry that perception with reality, our outcomes are better. When you are able to perceive what is happening to you in that sort of scale, and you can put it into context, you actually require less energy to overcome what you're going through. It becomes less traumatic, less of a fight, less of a struggle when you can perceive it and understand it and see how it fits with the expectations that you had going into whatever you're experiencing. Here's where it gets a little tricky. The expectations have been set our perception is based in reality. Uh, the next step in the process is treatment, okay? Because everybody's pain is subjective. That's a really huge takeaway with this. Everybody's going to experience things differently. Your hangnail might be the worst thing you've ever experienced, right? But this guy's broken ankle 
is like way worse, okay? Or he thinks your hangnail is really bad and his ankle's not that bad. So everybody's perception is gonna be a little bit different. The problem with our healthcare today is that pain is subjective and treatment is not. Treatment is objective. If this, then that. If your pain is a six, here's what you're going to get. So that's where people and patients have to take ownership in what they're experiencing and going through. So that way their treatment is actually appropriate for what they're experiencing. So in my case, a lot of the treatment is medication related, um, but it also is things like a massage or touch therapy. Sometimes we do nutritional coaching or weight loss coaching for arthritis type pain, um, distraction techniques, relaxation, that sort of thing. But if you have been abreast of the news and you know what's going on in the world today, it's pretty easy to think about how the majority of people associate pain with narcotic medication. I'm in pain, I want drugs. That's the culture that we have grown into. And I want to explain why and how this came about and what we're doing to try and change it. So in uh, 1991, something happened that started us on this upward trend of opioid use. So this graph illustrates the amount of opioid prescriptions that were filled at commercial pharmacies between 1991 in 2013. Anybody have any guesses what happened in 1991 in the medical community regarding pain that started this upward trend? Anybody know? No? You, yeah, I've got somebody in the back that has an idea. Pain is the vital sign now. Pain as the fifth vital sign. Thank you, that's correct. So in 1991, the American Pain Society came out and said in a response to patients having pain in the hospital and in surgery, we want to do something to make sure that they're getting really great care. So we are going to declare that pain should be a fifth vital sign. If you aren't sure what vital signs are, <laughs> I don't know. We're talking about things like heart rate, blood pressure, the amount of respirations you take per minute. So these are things that keep you alive. So when pain is the fifth vital sign was introduced, all of a sudden providers on every single encounter are assessing patients for pain and asking, what is your level of pain on a scale from zero to 10? So when you have a situation like that and you have a patient population, if they're lacking the education on these expectations and their perception of reality on this scale of zero to 10, of course, they're going to say, yeah, I'm a 10 out of 10. I want those really good drugs. This hangnail is killing me. And I've been in the ER for nine hours. And I could use some Dilaudid. <laughs> so that's how this process started. So without proper education, without patient awareness of the risks and the side effects of these medications, the use of these opioid prescriptions started to skyrocket. Between 1991 and 2013, these prescriptions, a percentage rate of use, went up 172%. 172% increase in the amount of opioid prescriptions being filled at pharmacies in this time frame. So this is the battle that we are now fighting. What's happening is healthcare providers are now trying to backpedal and go, wait, 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 wait. Maybe that wasn't such a good idea. We need to assess pain, maybe not so rigidly, but we need to look at it another way. So we've started to do non-pharmacological means of managing these patients' pain. All these other things I mentioned, like sometimes nerve stimulators for back pain. Um, any sort of light therapy for migraines, anything new and up and coming that's not a narcotic with these heavy side effects. So the medical community is spending millions on research trying to figure out ways that we can manage pain without causing all of this high opioid use and the uh, opioid epidemic and addiction that we're seeing now. So I don't know about you, but I find it strangely ironic. 
uh, that now we're trying to revert back to the pain methods that we used before all this started and said, oh, it probably wasn't such a good idea. So that's a lot of what we're doing in my job anyhow, uh, to try and find alternatives um, that get us out of this situation that we've created. And I don't know if you can see this very well, but I should probably point out that that denominator is in millions. So that number in 2013 is 207 million prescriptions. So part of the problem. So what we have found in our program, if we kind of bring this all together, is that through this education piece, through helping patients understand these expectations and set them from the beginning and let them know what they're in store for and what's coming ahead, when we do that, help them understand the scale and ground their perception in some realm or neighborhood of reality, and then find a treatment that's conservative as possible while still managing their pain and keeping them comfortable after surgery, when we take all those things combined, we've increased our satisfaction scores, meaning the amount of patients that say they're satisfied with their pain management after surgery. It was exactly what they expected, and they got what they were looking for from their providers. By doing all of that, we increase the percentage of satisfaction from 42 to 90%, which is incredible. 90% of patients after surgery saying, yeah, you know, I, I knew all this ahead of time. It's exactly what I was expecting. So this knowledge not only is great for the satisfaction of patients, but more important to me especially, these individuals are grateful. They come to me and they come to their providers and say, thank you. Thank you for giving us this knowledge that helped bridge that gap between the unknown and reality. It took away my fear and it took away my anxiety. So when we apply those principles across the spectrum, because as I talk about pain in the hospital, because that's my specialty, like I said in the beginning, pain is not limited to the hospital. We're talking about pain that you experience every day. Um, divorce, loss of a loved one, um, you know, getting fired from a job that, or losing a promotion that you've been working so hard for for the last 10 years. It's all painful. We all experience pain on some different level. But if we set our expectations at a reasonable level, we perceive what's happening to us in a realistic way, um, and lucky enough to have somebody there to kind of walk us through it, and we have better outcomes. Um, pain is you know, no different whoever you're talking to. I mean, I'd be willing to guess that the pain of a broken arm probably isn't that much different than the pain of a broken heart, right? Pain is unavoidable, um, but it does not have to control you. And with my patients, it does not have to control their recovery. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you.